our speaker today is Mr. Bob Dunn. His talk is How to Repurpose a Single Piece of Content and Rule of Content. In his 25 years of running a business, Bob Dunn has discovered that being flexible is the key to survival. His adventures yeah. in entrepreneurship began in the 70s when he found himself driving an ice cream truck. The memory of those annoying jingles that ran through his head helped him eliminate many tunes when he started searching for intro music for his podcasts. Bob, known as Bob WP, has taught thousands of WordPress users and continues to stretch his creativity to find the best ways to help people sell their products and create and repurpose their content. Please welcome Mr. Bob Cotton. So I've been doing this 11 years, talking to a lot of bloggers, and do coaching, training. Interesting, when I meet somebody, when we get talking about blogging, there's always those two spectrums. How's it going? Oh, I'm excited. No, they just get all jacked, they've been blogging, everything's going cool, content's blowing out. Then there's the other end of the spectrum. How's blogging? They get this look on their face. You get pale, they look like they're going to puke. Because they know that they haven't been blogging and now they feel guilty. Because they're going to have to admit the last time of blogging was two months ago. And then there's everybody between. And the problem is, blogging is tough. I've done it for a long time. And I've discovered a lot of different ways to create content, to repurpose content, but it, it's a never-ending thing. You've got all these people coming up with ideas. And as time changes, the medium changes, the opportunities out there change. That's where this comes in. Now, I'm going to be talking about two things here, kind of twofold. One is this, how to take a single piece of content and actually make more content out of it. The other part that's essential to that is refreshing your current content. And that is just as critical, and you're going to find a lot of use for it. And maybe it doesn't create tons of content, but you're already using something you've already done. And likely, it's something that has been successful so far. So why do we want to do this? Three reasons. We want to make ourselves happy, because we're tired of always generating new ideas, thinking of new content, sweating at night, whatever your problem is with blogging, it's ourselves. We want to make ourselves happy. We want to make our readers happy. We want to keep pushing content out that they find useful, they find educational, that they keep coming back to you. And if Google ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. That's really the bottom line. I mean, we, we are, you know, bowing to the Google God. And we want to keep Google happy with our content. So, what I do is really a mix of all three of these things. It's really combining them all, figuring out, you know, how I can make my life a little bit more enjoyable, how I can make my readers happy, and how the search engines will continue to find me. Now, everything I talk about, I've done myself. Sometimes I've done it for a few months, sometimes I've done it for years. So it's not I'm just projecting what might happen. I can tell you for a fact that some of this stuff works. I'm going to be talking about internal links a lot. Now, how many of you have heard people talk, okay, you've got to get inbound links and external links? I mean, you probably have heard that in various oh, SEO sessions. Uh, you hear it everywhere. It's such a huge thing. But what we don't think about is our internal links. And those are the links that are within our blog linking to other posts, our own content. And those are just as critical. And the reason being is that Google, now I'm, I'm a very low-tech person, so how I describe things, I'm not going to get into why. I just kind of know the concept of it. Eternal links basically give Google a roadmap. It helps them to understand the kind of content you have and what you're talking about a lot, and it makes more sense to them. So when they go from link to link to link when they're doing their thing that Google does, it's saying, hey, this makes sense. Because this is showing me what this blog is about. And that's why internal links are so important. That's what repurposing 
is a huge part of that, is making sure that not only when you do it, when you write that first post, but that you're going in and actually mentally remembering to go in and make more internal links happen. And they've got to be common sense internal links. They can't be forced. You, don't, you want it to flow in your content. You want it to relate to your content. You don't do it just for the sake of interleaking. So, as I mentioned, updating content is huge. This is probably one of the biggest factors that I grow my audience, I grow my search outreach, I grow my organic search because of this. And there's really three different things that I'm going to be talking about with posts, with your content. Tweaks turns and twists. So tweaks, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. The little things that you do. This is stuff you're going to go back into your posts. You're going to change out a link. You're going to add a little bit of content. You're going to put an internal link in it. Whenever you are, and, and you probably look at this and say, my God, Bob, you know, you're talking about, how am I going to have the time to do all this? Put this in the back of your head when you're doing other stuff. When you're going in and doing other work on a post. Or maybe there's another reason that drives you into edit that post. Somebody tweeted, hey, did you know your first paragraph has three misspellings? Yeah. So you go in there. Maybe that's the time to say, okay, I've got to review this post and see if I can boost it up. And those are the, this is just updating posts. So you do something, you click update. Another example of this is I monetize my site a lot with the affiliate links, different stuff like that. So when I'm in there, I'm thinking, hey, you know, is there some way I can logically and make it readable to put an affiliate link in there? Or have I written four other posts since I did this post that actually talk about the same topic that I can easily have a paragraph and link to those? Give people another step to go out and learn more about the specific area maybe I just touched on in that post. So that is really important to go in and keep those posts updated. Now, one of the things I really encourage you to do is get up to, hook up to some kind of Google you know, Analytics, like Google Analytics, something that you can start watching your posts, find those high-ranking posts. Those are your gold mine. Find those and go in there and do stuff to them. Just because you think, oh, they're doing good. You know, this is number two, I'm making a lot of visits per month, whatever, you know, it's doing conversions, you have to look at that. But also look at it as, what can I do to even make it better? Better for me, better for my readers, better for the world. So those, those revising that post is very important. Now we go to the, the crappy posts. The posts that you look at and they're kind of dated, uh, they don't really relate anymore. They don't uh, get any traffic. It's like bed posts, just garbage. And you're going through and you're thinking, okay, I'm going to clean these things out. Now you've got to make a decision. You can take the easy way, go in, delete it. And, but always make sure you put a redirect. A lot of the plugins, Yoast and stuff will allow you to do a redirect. So redirect it somewhere onto your site. It's not even your home page. But you don't want a ton of those redirects. So what I do is I go in and I look at it and I have to totally get innovative and think of how can I make this post alive again? I'll go in there and I'll work with the SEO. I'll work with the, maybe the keywords. I'll work with the title. I'll change the title. Maybe it's so obsolete that I take something, a similar topic, totally rewrite it, and still leave it as that published post. So that it's not always a matter of getting it rid of all those posts that aren't doing things, that aren't driving traffic, that aren't making conversions. It's, you, you're going you're gonna to find out that I can give you examples here, but you're going to find your own, what should I say, rules? You're going to find your own creative way to do this. Because it really depends on your content, what your audience is looking for. But I, I think I want to give you some guidance. And that's where this is, you know, 
So don't don't always just delete, delete, delete. Unless it's maybe a post about some workshop you did three years ago. Maybe it's time to get rid of that. And just put a redirect or put even a, you know, one of those, um, I, I can't remember what it's called. It's a, not a 404, but it's another one that just basically says this content's God, it's buried, it's history. Now, the big one is a twist. I do this the most on my site. And what I mean by this is this is work. So you're doing a little revised tweaks. And I'm going to give you an example of my site and what I write about. And hopefully you can kind of relate that to what you write about the kind of content. I write about WordPress. Let's do it. I write a lot of tutorials on plugins. And those plugins update. And they change. So I look at my analytics and I see what, what posts are really ranking high. And I'm still pulling in people to these posts, they're still reading them, but I'm looking at it and thinking, wow, that plugin has changed a lot in the last two years. So I basically rewrite it, put in new screenshots, and do the whole shebang. And what I do is and this is the important part, is if it's a high-ranking site, a high-ranking post, you don't want it down very long, but you're going to take it down to a draft mode. You're going to update it, and then you're going to reschedule it and send it out again as new content. Why is that great? You think, well, won't my readers get pissed off? They're starting to see things that I published a while ago. More than likely, depending on their traffic, people are landing there by search, and they're not paying attention to what what's coming out when. So, do that, and there's something really important to remember when you're doing this. If it's a high-ranking post, and people are finding it in the search engines, don't touch the title. It's like, why, why fix a wheel that's not broken? Is really what you're looking at. You know, this title is working for you. It's already driving traffic there. People are searching and they're looking for something and maybe they're looking for an answer and they're clicking through, so don't, don't mess with the title unless it really doesn't fit the topic anymore. If it's, if it's such a rewrite that you just think, and if it's a dead, you know, a post that doesn't have much ranking, hey, go for it. Change whatever you want because it's not being ranked, there's probably not a lot of leads out there. As long as you still think, you know, what are my feet, what is Google looking for in that title? What are my readers looking for? That permalink thing, though, is a little bugger that you can get in a lot of trouble for. But people will say, oh, well, I want to change a permalink because, and the slug at the end of it, because that's going to be, you know, Google Live, and somebody told me, like Google says, you know, the slugs are really important in search. Whatever. That's not the worst part of changing that thing. If you decide to change that, then every out link that you have out there on this, you do a redirect. Well, now you'll get a 404 error page. So I really suggest when you redo those high-ranking posts, don't touch the title. Don't touch the permalink. Is working for you so far. Likely you're just still writing on the same topic and you want to keep that Google juice going. So don't mess with it. I've, I've, I've tested this a little bit off and on and it can really screw things up. And a, a post that can be ranking, you know, your 10th highest post suddenly goes off the charts. The other piece is if, if any of you use, how, do, how many of you use Yoast SEO plugin? Quite a few of you, so this is very. Again, you've got your slug down there. Make sure you know it doesn't change. The title you can change, likely you won't need to. The meta, again, if it's high ranking, why mess with it? It's it's driving traffic there. Don't don't get this suddenly enlightened. You know, come back from a work camp, have three cocktails. Oh, you know, I just feel like this would sound better, you know. Don't touch it. Just don't touch it. Keywords, you can play, if you're into the keyword part of stuff, play around with it a bit. 
You can do that. Now, if you go to actually redoing the post that sucks in the first place and not getting any traffic, hey, go at it. Do whatever you feel will change it to get the traffic you need. Change the slogan, change the whatever, you know, put a redirect in there. But otherwise, just don't mess with this stuff. Because if it's already driving traffic to your site, you don't want to stop that. Now this, this um, one, I'm going to fake it really well because I realized I left an entire uh, slide off my presentation. So I'm going to sneakily turn the next slide into this slide without you knowing it, even though I've already told you. Well, what we're at now is, this is a perfect time for repurposing because we have so many mediums. We have audio, video. You know, video has been the biggest thing coming in to us for the last five years. Every year I hear, video is going to be the biggest this year. Year goes by, pretty big. And video becomes the biggest next year, next year, next year. Video is going to be big. It needs to be big, and we know it's one of the mediums out there. Audio, podcasts are huge again. I run two podcasts. I ran as many as four at one point. Those are big again. But think of all the different stuff you have, or the opportunities, I should say, that you have with your content. You create a single piece of content now, and you have all these other mediums. When I was doing a podcast, and it was audio only, I thought, how weird is it to create a video out of that? So I talked to a few people, I, because there's actually systems in place, there's a site called repurpose.io that will take your audio, not automatically create a video and upload it to YouTube, and it has that, you know, kind of little, um, um, sound wave on it that dances around. And that's about the most you get out of motion. And I thought, why would somebody play audio only on a video? So I asked a few people and they said, hey, I do it all the time. Because how many times do you put on a video where there's just some talking heads and you start doing other work? Do you sit there and stare at those two people talking forever? No, you don't. Likely, unless you're infatuated with their faces or something or there's something that drives you to watching it. There's the opportunity there. So when you've got video, you obviously have audio that you can extract. So you have all these different mediums now that you can take a single piece of content and turn them into other pieces of content. I mean, just on your site alone. So get creative with the video. Get creative with the audio. And those are just, you know, two, two mediums. But people just aren't, people consume stuff in so many different ways. You might like video, you might like audio, you might like text. You might occasionally like video, but then you like audio sometimes when you feel the difference. And you like text and you like video just as much, but maybe you like text a little bit better. So everybody's looking for that content. There's a really cool plugin called Amazon Poly that I use. I install it, and what it does is I only use it on my posts that have just text only. And what it does is it basically creates an audio automatically of your post. You select from a few different voices, and it puts it down at the end, and somebody can listen to your post. I, I mean, how easy is that? Why shouldn't you do that? If you say, oh, well, it's not my voice, get a lie. You know, I mean, You've got a podcast, yeah, podcast is your voice, but somebody just wanted to hear your post audio-wise. And what's cool about Amazon Poly is you can hide and show things. So what you can say is, let's say I have an entire post, and I say, go to, go to my site somewhere in that. Well, that really helps with some of the audio. Or I, go, I say, go to the, um, the site where, I don't actually say the site. I want to say it differently in text. But I want to verbally say, go to dot, 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 dot com and check. So I can tell Amazon Polly what to show in the post and what to only put in the audio. So if you have one screenshot and you're thinking, ah, oh, I'd like to use Amazon Polly, but that screenshot's simple, but I don't really explain it. Just do the screenshot, write out an explanation of what that screenshot is, hide it from the actual post, and it pops into the audio and replaces it. 
So it's 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 kind of an underused plugin, and it's it's worked great on mine. So so make sure you do all of this with all these different mediums. Extractions. This is the other way to create. Now, here's where you've got to decide on your content and how to get creative with it. And I'm going to be talking about duplicate content a little bit here, which I'll address as well. What I mean by extractions, extractions is one of the oldest things in repurposing your content. And I'll, I'll give you an example of this. You create 10 Twitter tips. Duh, you just have 10 posts there. You know, I, I'm, not talk, I'm not talking repurposing is easy. It's a matter of taking what you have and building from it. It's that simple. I mean, a lot of us are already doing that. Maybe just not doing it to the extent or getting a little creative. So you have 10 different posts. And what's really cool about that is you can elaborate on those posts, get more into depth about each one of those tips, and interlink it. So now you're telling Google, you know, hey, I've talked about that. Twitter a lot, I got all, all this content leading people to more educational content about that specific post, and that's a goal of mine. I do, when I, for a while I was doing transcripts on my podcast, and I do these transcripts and they were like, you know, massive transcripts, I mean, thousands of words. And I started thinking, okay, I got, I got to put my brain on here and think, what is, what's a way to really do something with these transcripts. And I realized that every, my transcript was interview, so I'm asking the question specifically for a specific part of that interview. So let's say, let's go to 10 tips of Twitter. And I'm, I'm just throwing something out the top of my head. So I, maybe I'm talking to the Twitter expert, maybe I'm talking to Bridget, who did the keynote, and she's answering. And maybe one of the questions is, is What's the best way to make product conversions using Twitter? Well, that's buried in that podcast transcript. But I can take out that particular chunk of it, put it in a post, and title it, How to Make More Conversions for Your Product on Twitter. Now, I'm going to show you how, you know, I'm doing duplicate content there, so there's something you're going to want to do to make sure that Google doesn't say, oh, duplicate. Content, you're not fooling me. But the point is, now I'm able to drive people to social by putting that title, that one question, that those people that are, is driving them nuts what to do to help conversion for products on Twitter, they're going to be driven to that single post, and then I'm going to, in that post, I'm going to say, hey, now you can go here, Bridget, talk all about Twitter. And hopefully I lead them over to the podcast. So I've answered a specific question, created another piece of content, and I could realistically go through and do that with every one of the questions I asked her. And the, the whole thing is, is I'm driving people to my site because I'm asking something specific. You know, it's like, oh yeah, another 10 Twitter tips, we all need that. But if it's something that hits a nerve with me, and I do products, and I want them to convert, and I want to use Twitter, then I'm more likely to go to that than just a general 10 Twitter tips. And I'll read it, and even if you don't move to the full podcast, you've already maybe got a new reader. And this is just one example. So look at your content. I mean, there's interviews, there's tips, anything that you can elaborate on. That's basically it. Just elaborate on content. Don't, don't think, you know, because you can generate it, and, and I'm doing it from a transcript, and I could actually then pull out that particular piece of the video, or the audio, <coughs> audio in my case, and I could have that a separate little audio. And maybe I could add it there. Or I use Amazon Polly to create an audio on that post. <coughs> the thing is with repurposing your content, especially taking a single piece, is really looking at it from all angles, and understanding what your readers want and how you want them to find that content. What's going to drive them there? Whether you're sharing it on Twitter, to an organic search, whatever. So I, I, I wish I had an example for every one of these, but you can pretty much guess. Where do you pull out that content? I can't tell you how many times 
I pulled out content and was able to repurpose it into something else. And that's the whole key to it. It's, you know, I'd love to say, here's a little red pill I want you all to take it. You're going to go home, you're going to sit there and let it kick in, you're going to have this moment of euphoria, and all this sudden content's going to regurgitate onto your blog, and you didn't have to do a thing because of Bob's little red pill. Well, as you can guess, no little red pill like that exists. One post serves all. I know a guy that is very successful at what he does. And what he does is on Monday, he sends out an email to his email list with an article. He takes that same article on Tuesday and puts it on his blog. On Wednesday, he creates a video on it where he's talking about that particular one. On Thursday, he does a podcast on it. He does one piece of content, essentially, one idea, and every week create four pieces of content, and he has thousands of subscribers. Because he just, you know, twists and turns it a little bit. It's going to be different than him talking on video versus maybe on the podcast. It's a little bit more subdued. You know, and, but he always gives his readers that first look at it. And that makes him feel special. Then he puts it on his blog. And he does this time and time and time again. And it works like a dream for him. And his audience has figured that out. And they kind of, you know, they can gauge, okay, this is coming through. If I want to hear this in, you know, audio form, I want to watch a podcast, I want to see him talking about it on a video, I can look forward to it that day of that week. Very unique. I, I couldn't believe how well he, and he just has it. He has a streamline. He has this workflow that he just goes through it all. So there, I used to do a um, some of my most popular posts in the world were video was a uh, Genesis child theme tutorials. What I would do is I'd create two videos. One showed them how they could set it up as a demo. One showed them what they can't do without knowing code. Then I did this long post with it that pretty much explained everything that I explained in the video. And those are some of the popular posts, most popular tutorials I had on my site. And they're still going back to them, and they're like four years old. I think they're even some more outdated. But people are still going back to those. I used to do a podcast that I would do a video, an audio, and I'd do a post on it. So every week, you'd go to that post every Friday. There was a video of me talking it. i just pull out the uh, the audio, cool thing about pulling out the audio, then you can create a podcast out of it, you can stream it into iTunes and all that good stuff, and then I also wrote a post on it. So people got there and they had a choice. Cool, I want to listen to it, I want to watch Bob, which probably people didn't watch Bob as much as they wanted to listen to it or read it. But it was an option and it was easy for me to just pump that stuff out. Because I basically created the post first, it was easy to make the video from that, and then we just pulling out the audio from the video. And I did that, and that, again, was a very popular podcast. It took a little bit more work, but it, people loved it because they had options. Sorry, I'm checking my time here. Yeah, I'm good. I'm going to have time to kind of press you, no doubt. So social. So social, how does social play into and we get kind of a little confused because we don't think of social really as repurposing. We think of social as engagement, conversation, sharing. You know, you share your content. You know, people go and see it. So it's not necessarily, in a way, it's repurposing. And you really think about the concept of social because you're, you are repurposing content to a different people, um, you know, group of people, and you're trying to drive them to it. Now, if you look at LinkedIn and Facebook and Google Plus for however much longer it actually exists, which I don't think is too much longer, you know, you don't have a word count like Twitter. So what I do sometimes, instead of using that, you know, little meta description, I'll pull it in the first paragraph. I kind of, you know, repurpose the content and put it in for my share. 
instead of trying to think of something you know, new. Now that seems like a no-brainer. LinkedIn, how many of you do LinkedIn articles? LinkedIn articles is like repurpose build right there for you. Because the best way to do a LinkedIn article is to write a post on those 10 Twitter tips, do a LinkedIn post that says five Twitter tips, copy it in there, and then say, hey, I have five more tips over on my post. And hopefully you have them click through. Maybe they don't, but they still feel good about you and everything is warm and fuzzy. But maybe they go, God, these are five good tips. I want to know what the other five are. I've done that on LinkedIn quite a bit. And it's a, it's a good way. I mean, it's, you know, it's, I, I've yet to, is there anybody in here that can honestly say that LinkedIn has like really changed their lives and they're just, it's been an amazing experience? Come on, somebody, please. I'd love to see one person. You know, LinkedIn is kind of coming out of its, its shell. And I see a lot of people moving to LinkedIn away from Facebook and Twitter. But that's not. So social, just find unique ways. I mean, when you think of repurposing your content, if you do a podcast or a video, there's a lot of services out there will do snippets of stuff for you, create a short little video. And then the way that's repurposing it, because you've already created this video, you can share the shorter video on Facebook, drive people to wherever your other video is, or audio. I don't know how many times you've seen podcasts that put in They'll put some teaser in. They'll go ahead and I used to do uh, like the first. I pull out a nugget of something that just said, and I'd create a short video and I'd put it on Facebook. And even though that's you know kind of promotion marketing, however you want to say it, it's, it is repurposing because I was able to find that specific piece that people would go, oh, that's cool. I think I will listen to this podcast. So again, it's, it's a matter of getting creative. It's a, and, it, and you're probably sitting there going, yeah, Bob, well, this is just all fine and dandy. You know, I, I, I wanted that magical red pill. But what you're going to find is that as you go, you know, hopefully this stuff will stick in your head. You're going to find your own ways to do this. And that's the beauty of it. A lot of the stuff I did, I'm explaining that I've done, I, nobody ever told me to do it. I just thought about it. Sat down, looked at my content, and thought, how can I repurpose this? I've got a lot of content on here. And like I said before, those analytics are going to be critical because you want to know the content that it's doing. You want to know your content that's ranking. And you want to build more content around those ranking posts. I mean, it's it's kind of like oh, I, I'm trying to think of an analogy, but you've got this gold mine already on it. Why not take advantage of it? And especially with that interlinking. I, I go to some sites and it's like, my God, you, you're missing out. You're not connecting the dots. You're not sending. You know, not everybody's going to say, Oh, cool. I'll click on this. I'll go read this. 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 It's not going to happen time, obviously, but given that option where people, yeah, you know, this is, this is a part I really wanted to know more about. And I've actually started writing posts always with repurposing in mind. And that's another thing is, from here on out, when you're writing a post, think, do I need to give it all away here, or can I tease them? And I don't mean teasing them by, you know, doing some headline that's going to not live up to its, you know, what it says, basically. I'm talking about giving them enough stuff that they can walk away at that point feeling good about it, feeling good about your content, but at the same time, <clears throat> you know, I want to click through. I want to see that. Maybe I bookmark it. Maybe they don't have time. So they click through, they bookmark it, they come back and read it. Or they listen to it. Or they watch it. Duplicate content. So I've talked a lot about this. And everybody always freaks out when I talk to you. Ah, now duplicate content. Google is like, you know, they've got like this cattle prod that's waiting for you when you do duplicate content. They're going to penalize you. You're going to be sinking to the hole and the depths of Google hell and, you know, everything's going to explode. 
Well, most of you are using Yoast SEO. And again, I'm not a real technical person, so I go to these people and I trust them to tell me what to do. Because they, so far, haven't led me astray. I listen to them because they know what they're talking about. They spend a lot more time doing this stuff. And there's this little thing called canonical links. Canonical. Canonical. I think that's how you say it. Canonical URL. Now, I can get into the technical definition of it, and I've written a post on my blog by the time you're out of this room that goes over all this stuff and has some links to this. So if you go and look at my latest post. But what, it, what this URL does, so let's go back to my transcript. My transcript is this long thing I pull out. I actually use duplicate content because I paste in one part of that transcript. When I go in there, I put in the URL of my main podcast. And what if I tell them Google? I'm telling Google that don't pay attention to this so much as that other stuff. Because that's really where this came from. How's not that a technical definition if you've ever heard of one? I mean, if you want to go to Yoast, they got a whole thing. But that's kind of it in a nutshell. And where you get the boost, so you're saying, okay, now Bob, now I'm really confused because then maybe the search engines don't won't start ranking that. Maybe they don't, but that doesn't mean you can't share it out and still drive people to it. And that's kind of the purpose of that other little piece. And it's the purpose of also being a little bit lazy and, and dropping it in there. But as long as you do that, you're not going to get caught for duplicate content because you are telling Google that you're telling the search engines, however you're telling them, I have no idea how this works, but it is saying that, hey, you know, this is a post that really you should be seriously looking at. This post where I pulled this from. So you're still sending that over Google to get that little bit of juice, whatever that is. But that's important because you don't want Google to start analyzing you for Google content. And, and Yoast has it right built in. You can just go down there, hop in that URL, and you're good to go. Like I said, I got a link. You can go to Yoast and just canonical. Go ahead and uh, search it there. And he has a he has way more information than you probably ever want to know about this. But it's important because duplicate content can be nasty. So as I get kind of wrapping up here, a couple things. I've touched the tip of the iceberg. If you think of repurposing your content, I mean, you're in Seattle. Seattle likes to recycle. <laughs> you know, that's, that's it. You're recycling your content. You're not throwing it away. You're not being a bad person, putting it in the content pile with all the other crappy content, outdated content. So there's all these options that you have to repurpose more content. I mean, just look through them. I ran a online course for a while. I've ran about everything you can possibly. I've done all that stuff, and I'm not doing it anymore. I do a lot. Huh? But I did this online course. I had these great courses on there. Well, at one point, I decided I don't want to do this anymore for various reasons. I could give another whole session on why I didn't want to do an online course. But that's a very negative thing. But I looked at this and I thought, my God, I have a lot of content here. So what did I do? I created a bunch of posts with all that, those courses. I just basically posted them as posts now. And I probably got more benefit out of them than I ever did with the freaking online course. I got more traffic. It was like people coming in, like, oh my God, this is amazing. And you know, you kept, you have that temptation. You want to go into the comment and say, yeah, why would you pay for it? But hey, you know, let, let them let live. So I, you know, I did that. I did that. I had a membership site. It was the same thing. Protected content. When I stopped that, hey. Here you are, people. It's a world. Ebooks. We've written four ebooks. Those are now long posts. You know, got tired of giving them away. Just, you know, whatever. If I don't get them in here, really, they actually get some use. They become some of our most popular posts. Maybe I'm not collecting names or subscribers from it. Maybe I'm not selling it anymore. But the benefit is different, and it reaps a lot. So, so all these different things 
there's tons of content you can reuse. So don't ever think, oh, you know, there was many times I thought, oh, I failed, the online course sucks, nobody's buying it, this sucks, nobody's doing this. I didn't think that, I thought, oh, right. I got some content. I did last January, I did a 48 hour marathon, content marathon. I decided to get this in my head that I was going to push out a piece of content on my blog once every hour for 48 hours. Never do. <laughs> I don't wish that on anybody. I spent a long time working on that besides what I was putting out at the time. And it was, a, it was an interesting experience. So let's kind of leave it at that. But the thing is, what I realized is when I put all those 48 hours, all those content, 48 pieces, I thought, man, I shut that stuff out fast. People are like, whoa, you know, I missed that, I missed that. So what I did is I went back and one by one, I took them off the grid, republished them. People, oh, that's a great post, because they missed it in that 48 hours. So I had 48 days of content that I was able to repurpose. I mean, that's not the ideal. That's really kind of the same part of thinking, I'm going to repurpose content, so I'm going to buy, you know, 48 pieces of content in 48 hours. I mean, that's not really a strategy. That's lunacy. You know, it's... But it, it was something I kind of challenged myself to do. And in the end, I thought, wow, you know, I really got a lot out of this. So I, I, I've done a lot of really stupid things in my business, and I admit it. But I've always found a way to recoup from that. And repurposing has been huge. Now, as I said at the beginning, how I said, I never, did I ever say this was going to be easy? I, I did not like the word easy. Easy to say, easy. It does take work. I mean, you know, like I said, the little Bob Red Pill does not exist, so it's not going to happen. But there are ways you can do it that are less taxing on you. A lot of them I mentioned. You know, the simple updating, uh, taking content, repurposing it, pulling out audio, creating video. Maybe you're not into video, then do audio. Maybe you don't like people. Whatever the case, really go through your content. And everything I've talked about, think about it. How can I do this? You know, it's not a magic bullet, but it will really get you... I, I can guarantee you will be amazingly surprised. That's why I'm still doing it. I've been doing it for probably four or five years, and I'll continue to do it. I keep going back through my posts, and I look at them. And like I said, take that moment when you go in to reply to a comment. Anytime you're going into an old post, there's always going to be some reason you end up back at an old post. Somebody shared it, or like me. I go into old posts to teach myself something that I forgot. So I go in, you know, how did I do that? Oh, I wrote it, I did a video on it, so I watched myself tell me how to do it. Which is maybe why I've done tutorials, is basically to help um, myself more than anybody else. But, I'll go in and I'll, you know, sometimes I'll say, oh, I wrote this post on this, how to do it, and then I go in and say, oh, that doesn't work anymore, but that's getting traffic, but I have a better solution, so why don't I switch it out and put a better solution in here? Maybe it's a different plugin or something that just works better than when I wrote that four years ago. And in that case, then, I would republish it. I get all excited, cool, I do a little quick change out, write about it a little bit, especially if it's a shorter post, and republish got new content, and it's something I know people were already interested in. My number one post is how to create two blogs on a WordPress site. This has been my number one post for the last 10 years. I've republished it three times, I've repurposed it as a result three times, I've changed links, I've added videos. Can anybody guess what this post is about? It's really a simple idea categories. It's telling people how to use categories on their site. I've had over 700 comments on it, on the three different versions. And that is one sucker that I've tried to repurpose and monetize that I just can't do. There's going to be those ones that you think, oh, this is a gold mine. And no matter what you do, what twist, you think, okay, can I convert them? do this and get them to maybe click on this affiliate link. I just, I don't know. It's like 
the demon of my blog because it's so freaking popular that I can't do anything but make people happy with the solution. Which is not a bad thing either. So I leave it up and I do update it every once in a while. So that is repurposing a comment. I mean, it's, it takes work, it's getting creative, it's looking at your own content, because everybody's going to write different kinds of content, so you've got to start thinking, how can I do this to my content? Not easy, but I'll, I'll tell you, Dan, Dan will work it. So um, if there's any questions, I might even be uh, perfect here. Yeah? Do you have to alert Google or anything like that after you repurpose it? Um, no, and as long as you do all the things I I've uh, said to do, you know, get the duplicate content, make sure you put that canonical link in there. If you republish it, you know, I, I, I've actually, I thought, I thought about that when I first started, especially when I would take it off the grid for a little while, and then I would post it again. I think, should I be telling somebody about this? And of course, that's like, yeah, I'm going to tell you, hey, Google, you know, we care about blah, 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 blah here. And, and I, so I, I, I did it at the risk of watching it to see if the traffic would go down or up. Depending on it, I would say almost 95% of the time it never went down. It would either stay level or it increase. So that little bit of time off the grid never caused any problems. So I, I figured Google must appease my, my weirdness or whatever, so I was able to do it and I didn't have to, yeah. As long as I just didn't screw up on my end, Confused Google. Oh, I'm sure there's, yeah, she said run it through the console and have it re indexed. And, you know, I, I'm very lazy. You know, I kind of like, okay, this works, cool, now I move on. What other little weird creative things I can do?
Okay, so maybe a, uh, one more question. We have time for one, one more. Oh, I change it. On the ones I republish, I do change the dates, yeah. But the ones I just do a little tiny update to, I leave them that same day. So it's kind of the ones I really do major republishing, because often I'm writing about WordPress tech, and it needs to reflect what's happening right now with that, maybe that plugin. So thank you all.